Hey there, how is it going? In this video, I wanna go over some things that's been on my mind and a little bit of behind the scenes updates on what I've been trying to do for the channel and how that has uh, not worked out for me, at least in the ways that I wish it would have. Just a casual little video, me talking, going over some things and explaining some small little updates that I'm planning to do for the channel to help out. So with that said, let's get into all of it. So it's been no surprise that ever since I started my YouTube channel, my endeavor into this world of YouTube, I've actively been trying to connect and network with other creators, other YouTubers in the automotive related sector. One of the first YouTubers I reached out to, I mean like very early in my YouTube days, I mean I'm talking about just like a few hundred subscribers, was uh, Stang Mode. At the time Stang Mode was really kind of coming up in the world, you know, he was doing a lot of events. He's out of New Jersey. Me at the time being in Maryland, New Jersey is only a couple hour drive. So depending on where he was at, sometimes he would be in Pennsylvania doing something, sometimes he'd be in Maryland doing something. Uh, there was a time he was in Delaware doing something, and one time he was in, in New Jersey. So you know, we're within a couple hours any which way you go so i would oftentimes go to his meets or or his events in efforts to you know try to get myself out there you know i would wear my cars created shirt so people would see you know it, i mean i was trying to advertise who i was and what i was trying to do as well he was mustang related content i had a lot of mustang related content so i thought it was a good fit you know only one time was i able to actually like speak to him i had a short little conversation with him after one of his events and I just asked him, you know, a couple of pointers, like what has worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? Any advice, tips? And, you know, I mean, he, he basically told me everything I already knew. It was kind of like the cookie cutter responses, which really is the meat and potatoes of kind of what you need to know anyway. So it's, it's not like it was a, a useless response. After that small little conversation, it never amounted to anything else. Since then, uh, my channel has grown substantially to not just a couple hundred, but a couple thousand subscribers. And now coming down to Florida, you know, home to a plethora of big automotive YouTubers and content creators really, really try to make valent effort to reach out and try the network try to connect with some of these other people first attempt was kyle from the boosted boys i ran into him briefly at uh, fl2k last year and i talked to him and i'm like hey do you network with other youtubers um and he's like well yeah i do i'm like what about like up and coming youtubers he said sometimes and I'm like, well, I am an up and coming YouTuber and I would love to network with more established content creators and YouTubers. And I had told him I had just moved down to Florida. I'm trying to like establish myself in the racing community and, and meet more car people. And he was like, yeah, cool, cool. You know, I'm like throwing the line out there like, hey, you know, I would love to connect with you and some other people like, hey, you know, but he, he didn't take it like. He was just kind of like, yeah. And I don't know if the dude was just like overly exhausted from that day and wasn't quite picking up what I was putting down. That didn't really result to anything. Okay, so uh, second attempt to <laughs> network with more established YouTubers. Uh, Cooper Bugetti, uh, he is a face that you, you may know if you watched Cletus McFarlane and his channel. Cooper was a prominent face on the Cletus McFarlane channel in the very early days. Cooper had since parted ways and started his own thing and, you know, created his own separate following, which is really cool. And, you know, with that, because Cooper isn't like nearly his, you know, idolized Cletus, you know, <laughs> like I thought, well, maybe this would be a better chance for me to get in touch with someone that is still related to a very well-established YouTuber, but not as nearly established themselves. Cooper was starting his own podcast and he had made posts asking people who would be interested to be on his podcast. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I'm interested. I'm not sure how interested he is in me, but I'm interested in being on his podcast, talking about cars. I mean, if he's interviewing people talking about their stories and how they got in the cars and what makes them love cars and all that, I'm like, well, then my story would be pretty cool. I think a lot of people would appreciate my story and you know cooper has a lot bigger following so i thought well this could be beneficial for both of us he could get someone new that no one knows about that people would 
potentially like and I could get some recognition you know, from another content creator that has a much bigger reach than I do. So I thought it was a beneficial thing to reach out to him and inquire about my interest of being on his podcast. And I did. I reached out. I sent him an email. I'm like, hey, man, saw your message on Facebook. I think it was. I think it was Facebook. He posted it about getting people to be on your podcast. I am definitely interested. Here's my channel. Uh, here's all my information. All right, cool. Thanks for reaching out. I got a lot of people booked already, so I'll put you on the list. I'm not sure how far I'll get with this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> all right, fair enough, I guess. Um, so that was many months ago, many, many months ago. And, and of course, I, I haven't heard nothing. Either my name never went on the list or it went at the very bottom of the list. And ever since then, his podcast has basically featured people that are already known, YouTubers that are already known, uh, people within the circle of, of people that he works with, that he's around, faces that are always on the Cletus McFarlane channel and uh, other related channels, people who work at the Freedom Factory and Bradenton Motorsports Park and, and all, anything related to the Cletus McFarlane channel is basically who ended up on his podcast for, for the most part. It was kind of a bummer. I was like, hmm, well, I thought this would be a good opportunity, but it didn't quite work out. All right, fine. Cut my losses. Let's move on to the next. Towards the end of last year, I think it was like in September, September, something like that. Uh, there was a really nice cars and coffee that I go to uh, every now and again in Orlando at Deserland. Back in September doing that show, there was another YouTuber that was being, you know, featured at that show, and that was Tavarsh. Some people may know Tavarsh, some people don't. Basically, he just rebuilds wrecked exotic cars. That's like his whole thing. You know, multi-million subscriber channel. I've been following him for um, probably four or five years myself. Of course, I got to meet him in person and talk to him. I was thinking to myself, you know, I wasn't very bold about it. Maybe I need to be a little bit more direct with my invitation to reach out and network with other people, you know, and I want to do this in a professional manner, but I also want to be kind about it and just be me. So, you know, I approached him and, it, you know, just me being me, uh, made him laugh, used that as the icebreaker to kick off the conversation. And I just let him know flat out, hey, I'm a growing YouTube channel. I'm doing everything I can to network with more established creators. Would you be interested in connecting with me? And I would love to talk to you about all the things that make your YouTube channel tick and, you know, just network. And he was like, yeah, sure, man. I, I would love to do that. And I'm like, what? Huh? You, you would. You, you would love to network with me, a, a peasant YouTuber. Because after all of the recent attempts, I was kind of actually shocked by his response. He's like, well, what's your YouTube channel name? I'm like, read the shirt. And he's like, got it. <laughs> he's like, just send me a message on Instagram and you know, we'll go from there. I'm like, cool, man. So, you know, I let a few days go by. I think like a week, I didn't want to be like really weird about it. You know, I let a week go by and then I sent him a message on Instagram, nothing. I'm like, okay, maybe he's busy. So another week went by. I'm like, okay, still hasn't even read the message. Let me send another one. Hey, is anyone there? Can you see my message or whatever? Nothing. I'm like, okay, well, I don't think he's ghosting me. So that can't be it. Maybe something else is going on. Another week goes by, send him another message. No response. So I'm like, okay, maybe he is ghosting me or something. I don't know. Because it happens to me a lot. Maybe my messages are going to his spam folder. I had no other way of contacting him. Found an email of his. I, I messaged him nothing. I'm like, okay, so this is strange. My final last ditch attempt to get in touch with him, I'm just going to drive over to his shop, which is only like 45 minutes from me. So I drive over to a shop with a handwritten note with my information on it saying, hey, I've been trying to get in touch with you, met you at so-and-so Cars and Coffee. Here's my information. Here's my phone number. I was just going to slip it under his door and be on my way. Well, little did I know he was doing something at his shop that day and he was actually outside. So it was a lot easier to be like, hey, you over there. And he's like, 
me and I don't think he initially recognized me at the time and I thought he thought something was about to go down and I started approaching to him I said you are horrible at answering messages remember I met you at the cars and coffee he's like oh yeah yeah sorry and I'm like here dude here's my information I was just gonna slip this into the door but here you are when you get a chance send me a message. He was like, okay, yeah, will do. So I was very skeptical at that point. I'm like, he ain't gonna send me no message. But the next day I get a response back from the original messages I had sent on Instagram. And he was like, hey dude, sorry, I didn't see these. That's cool, I see that you were busy, so I, I understand. So we threw a few messages back and forth, um, you know, and I would occasionally send out a message to him, but as time progressed, you know, every time I would reach out to him, my messages were just being read and left alone. So I knew he was seeing them, but not responding at this point. I don't know if there really isn't any interest on his end to network with people like me, Maybe he's just way too busy doing his own thing. Long story short, that that didn't end up being much either. So it was the most eventful attempt to network with a more established YouTuber, but in the end, it hasn't really resulted into anything that I was originally expecting. So another one bites the dust. And you know, my most recent attempt to network with people that are not well-known YouTubers, but the guys over at Parker Performance. I thought this is a very reasonable expectation to just get on ground level people in the world of YouTube. You know, they are doing YouTube videos in terms of like marketing their brand, their products and whatnot. They're not like full-fledged content creators, like stuff like I do and, and others, right? So they're only doing things that really are beneficial to marketing Parker Performance, I get it. And a couple of the guys that do work there have their own YouTube channel. So like the one guy's name is Yusuf and he has a following and a YouTube channel it goes by Mr. 297. He's EcoBoost Mustang related content and it's pretty cool because he's like pushing the boundaries of the stock EcoBoost platform. I mean, his EcoBoost Mustang with a stock long block, you know, bigger turbo and all the other add-ons in a 10-speed, his car's pretty quick. He's one of very few YouTubers out there really pushing EcoBoost Mustang platform in the in the way that he does. Uh, not to say it hasn't been done, and, and it has, but like he's doing it on a very modest level. He's like, how much can I get from as little as possible? And it's really cool. Probably best to get on ground level with these kind of people and, and build myself up with them rather than trying to put myself in the group of already well-established people who probably have way more, more important things to do than to worry about someone like me. I think that's probably a better thing. Um, realistically, you can't like force yourself into someone else's group. I get that. It wasn't quite my intention. I think maybe that was what some of the people were thinking about, like who the hell this guy thinks he is, trying to mooch off of our success or something like that, or at least that's what I always fear. So anyway, I'm not sure how far my relationship with Parker Performance will go. I think that that we will grow more fond of each other and there will definitely be a lot more future networking together. I think that's a much better way to go and then just build myself up that way. So that's kind of been a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that I haven't really mentioned all that much. So I thought that would be kind of an interesting story to kind of tell you some of the things I've been trying to do. It never hurts to try, right? I've never given up on it. With that out of the way, small, small little channel update in terms of what I'm actively doing now. Uh, I will be creating videos in attempts to market products doing uh, affiliate marketing, uh, more or less utilizing Amazon and Amazon links to market products. And I'm doing this in attempts to create more revenue for the channel because for some reason, I don't know why YouTube revenue has not been as good as it once was, and it doesn't seem to be getting any better, at least not for me. My views stay the same, yet my daily pay from YouTube goes down. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but I need to do something. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to afford other things I want to do to grow my channel. So in efforts to, to build more revenue, I'm going to start doing videos that are marketing products. You know, like a lot of my Chemical Guys products, for example. I'm going to make videos maybe showcasing those products and linking a Amazon link to the product somewhere in the video so people can be like, all right, cool, he's having great results. I'm gonna go pick this up for myself 
and you know I get a little bit of commission from that and help put that towards the channel. Generally don't like supporting Amazon. Uh, you know, some people feel the same way, some people don't. You know, it is what it is. I respect whatever, which way you think about Amazon. But this is more or less not an attempt to support Amazon, but to have people support me through someone like Amazon. You know, I can't do it all. Just something that will hopefully help build more revenue for the channel and that way we can continue to do more cool and exciting things. Just want to go ahead and throw that out there. You're going to see probably a fair bit more kind of videos like that because uh, if that ends up working out for me, then hopefully that will just be a much, much better solution than to relying on uh, YouTube revenue alone, which is not a good idea. <laughs> At the end of the day, my YouTube channel is a business and if it's not making money, then well, it's probably not going to stay in business. So with that said, I think that's going to wrap it up here for this video. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Keep a look out for our next true car enthusiast video.